Okay, hello friends, hello everyone. How are you doing? <laughs> Very intense time, so many things are happening. The main thing is Setna has been so underreported. Setna just changed signs. It will be for 41 years straight in Gemini from yesterday starting. That's a big one. Setna in Gemini, we will get to that. This is nature speaks in a simple way said, nature getting a voice, starting to interact, communicate much more with us. Setna is a very, very special planet. Takes 11,400 years to one circle around the sun, just this itself. This is the comet we were having um, in an exact conjunction with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction just short, not too long ago, and within an hour, I showed you that in my video, it's, it's amazing, within an hour, that comet was closest to the sun, coming back from a 71 year journey, so the timing was very special, really um, reinforcing that Jupiter-Uranus energy in a big way with uh, that additional secret potion ingredient which uh, changes everything that magic substance that's what the comet brings in so anyway this comet still is naturally um being observed you need a telescope yes but it is um one of a kind it's a pyrovolcanic one that means it can break out in huge eruptions uh, volcanic and brighten in its visibility by hundreds of times has a very interesting birth chart when it was first discovered, also with a strong Uranus and Jupiter axis, a grand trying to the ascendant actually, with the Sun, Mars and Jupiter all conjunct in Cancer in the water sign, creating that intensity of, um, I would say, Cancer at its, be at its best is a very nurturing home where everything is there in abundance, love most of all. It's love which actually is the energy which is manifesting reality from one moment to the next, something to ponder. So anyway, this comet still is going on. We just had another big solar flare. Here we are, another 3.7. This this uh, graph shows this is a little bit underwhelming because the lines are so tight together. But these are huge spikes into um, a really um, high energy X-ray territory of being blasted at. And I should get the solar maximum. So these are kind of normal. The sun is very peppered with solar um, with sunspots, with turbulences. So anyway, yesterday it was when Sedna entered Gemini. It was the second time actually, it had a, for a short period between June 15 and November the 25th, it had a dip back into Taurus. But meantime, in the meantime actually, on the 20, just a, also in November, a few days after it re-entered Taurus from a geocentric perspective, it had advanced into Gemini in heliocentric perspective, which is really the energetic backdrop. So since then, pretty much it has been already under the carpet bringing in that Gemini energy still expressed through the Taurian um, kind of more numb in that sense, more subdued and um, quiet, silent from the background. Now we have reached the level of both the geocentric and the heliocentric so both the energetic and the manifest level are now in Gemini this is super super in, in, important to know again this is a once in 41 year event we had yesterday and that was the, right, the time 15 hours or so when um, Setna entered Gemini 
You see there was a spike before and after. We will look at these two spikes as has, how they, again, very magically, just naturally are synchronizing, empowering that event, kind of like the two quotation marks. So here, get ready, something's coming. And that was it captured within two frames of energetic pulses strongly towards Earth. Actually, I should quickly intercept as I'm just recording now. This bigger spike was actually a double spike. And this is preceding Mars and Neptune to have their exact conjunction actually within a very short time. Let me just show you here quickly the numbers of the latest reading here and I have to move this chart to a little bit but I want okay I can do it that way um, we have Mars 2852 and you see Neptune 2852 pretty much as we are recording this is the that is the case these two are dead on conjunct chokers again just hours prior we have the big flare anyway let's um, go to set now now first I want to teach you something which I also just uh, really discovered in full uh, in its full glory these are the seven sisters the Pleiades the seven stars seven particular stars now i am as i haven't opened yet my edited page so just give me one sec actually i do this okay so here we are these are the seven sisters the pleiades and this is the zero degree gemini line this is based on the precession of the equinoxes of the steady very slow movement of the zero aries and zero libra axis the equinoxes against the starry background every 72 years for one degree that is what's called the great cycle 26,000 years roughly which actually equals the amount of light years we are away from the center of our galaxy an interesting symmetry there again of the special placement this solar system has within the galaxy as a whole anyway so it so happens that the Pleiades star cluster is right dead on the zero axis of Gemini and Taurus and naturally as this moves so slowly ahead every 72 years this line moves a one degree in this direction so here you see i did um, uh, the calculated exactly this is uh, based on the information as of october 22 so alkion which is supposedly um, a very important star in um, esoteric tradition as it says the universe revolves around Alkion which is not literally true but it could be in a in a more um, higher evolutionary way that intelligence came first here to planet earth from Alkion that sense it still is our parent in that sense of bringing life to this planet in that in that sense um higher life forms and culture and all of that as it said the Pleiades as one unit which is really much more than one could even say because each of these are stars in their own right have their own planetary systems there's many civilizations there but roughly they're about hundred thousand years ahead of us evolutionary wise so naturally they have space travel they have been seeding intelligences and them um, being uh, cosmic gardeners for many many generations and thousands of years so that's why Alkion is super important entered uh, Gemini in September 2000 now this alone is something to ponder about and to go back to this this was a uh, definitely a a high point in many ways the 
year 2000 before we got into the really dark ages back in September 20, uh, 2001, which was roughly a year later. So anyway, we, this um, kind of um, glorious phase was relatively short and then we had to dive into darker areas again now with the armor, with the know, uh, the knowing, the uh, experience we had through the 80s and the 90s. Those of us who was, are old enough to have truly experienced those two decades were wonderful. They were really forward looking. It was that Jupiter Saturn energy of from the 1980 conjunction, the first one in an air sign in Libra, which really opened the gate to a new age. And then naturally we had the setback, as I often really refer to. It's the easiest way to understand. Jupiter and Saturn went back into the Earth element for one more conjunction. It's a 800 year cycle. Every two centuries, Jupiter and Saturn meet in the same element. And since December 2020 was the first, now actually the second time it, they met in an air sign in Aquarius, as you all know. But from here on into the end of the 22nd century, all Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions will be in air, in the sign of communication and intelligence, intelligent exchange and the air element in that sense travel and and expands and all of that and also the the no boundary thing comes in in the air element very strongly as everything mixes constantly i um, would like to again tell you what my big eureka moment when i understood the um, the, the level of what that interchange exchange happens uh, with the with the atmosphere on the planet was the Fukushima event when within three days pretty much everywhere on the globe they could measure that radioactive um, whatever um, particles raining down so naturally that is atmosphere carrying everything so from one single spot that was on the planet it was measured within at the most three days and there were no uh, extreme better conditions at the time it was just that's just the way it is so whenever just consider that when you are um, uh, exhaling your air what was really in that sense having a close contact with your energy in that sense getting into the quantum entanglement with you resonating on that frequency within three days um, some of these atoms some of these molecules are all over everywhere on the planet this shows you the amazing interplay collectively we all have with each other on a constant base uh, in real time anyway the sign gemini is all about that it is brings this intelligence of of um communication and of everything being um interconnected and also understanding the basic nature of duality as being the two legs we stand on. Gemini is a very beautiful sign, naturally Taurus too, but Taurus is much more traditional and, and rooted in the, um, the I, I would in a negative way even say the dogmas, the, the, the rules, the how it's always been done, it's it's really more that a conservative energy which I'm not at all um, denying the value of it is of deep value it's always the balance of everything but we're definitely moving out of a very dense phase into a way more adaptable and uh, depending on the situation you you can change your expression in a split second into something totally uh, different it is it is that ability to 
to morph and, and shift uh, uh, very fast, Gemini has. It's, it's kind of a magical energy. I mean, no wonder Mercury is the planet which has been assigned to Gemini. And Mercury is also known as Magus, the magician, the, <clears throat> the one which by the pure power of thought is creating universes even this is really what it it means at the beginning was the word it's not really the written letters it is the thought it is the vision it is the idea and that is what is at the base of everything anyway you see in a bigger picture we are in a in a really great transition of the whole seven sisters and I like to look at it that way. Um, actually, it's like a spiral. If you start with Asterope, Taigeta, Seleno, Electra, Merope, Alcyon, and Maya. You see, it's a, it's a spiral. Hmm? It's beautiful. And it ends with Maya. And Maya was just the one which entered um, Gemini in October 2022. It's the last one. Before that was September 2021. And the one before that, January 2019, which was when Arakot had its closest flyby with, um, actually, I should say it the other way, it was the space probe, the New Horizons space probe had a flyby with um, Arakot, the small Cooper Belt object, which is really the farthest distant uh, object we ever have closely inspected. Uh, it made science to rewrite all their books about the evolution of the solar system, that deep gravi gravity that um, contact had, which happened. I mean, it, this can't be blunt, but it happened on January the 1st, 2019. This in itself showed the magnitude of that important event, which was named afterwards um, uh, very meaningfully. Arakot is a Native American word for a man standing under the open sky, seeing the full panorama, seeing the whole picture, really. And that is what we are so much um, have come closer to. We, um, everyone usually has their particular way of seeing things. Uh, you could even call it a tunnel vision or very um, kind of conditioned to, to, to perceive things in a particular way. So all of that has been broken open in multiple ways in the last four years with uh, literally quite, uh, quite um, brutal in many ways and naturally very difficult for many people, particularly if they were not able to see what was coming they were kind of unprepared but it definitely did open all the um that uh, crusted um dogmatic and and stagnant um energy on this planet yes it was kind of uh, it was not um the way you would prefer it to happen it happened in a quite uh, dark way and it is again that the devil is God's best helper in that sense from the perspective we are now at we definitely can see that at least if we are kind of the luck if you were early on um, um, really seeing where this was going and I mean my awakening started after 9-11 uh, this was uh, really a headbanger this was big it took me um, years, uh, actually uh, weeks and months, I should say. I was really committed to find out why this was the way it was. And then naturally the whole whatever came out of that, you, your eyes open to so many dimensions and understanding that things are quite different from what they're told. Anyway, this is happening on a galactic, on a actually solar system level for sure earth level for sure but as again as i said before earth is at such a special place in the solar in the in the galaxy 
and whatever happens here will ripple out and will have effects on all different other uh, dimensions and timelines we are not even aware of. Uh, it's, it is, um, we are the ones which are really at the, at the helm, at the, at the crest of the wave. It's the foam on top and, and the rest all will naturally follow. That's kind of how I see it. Very beautiful that the seventh of these seven sisters in that sense, if you look at it in this, um, in this um, kind of spiral like motion, the seventh has now also entered Gemini territory. You see it's a few more years, years for Taigeta, Seleno and Electra to fully pull even. So yes, this is a transition phase which is so monumental, so historically complex that it definitely takes at least a full generation from 2000 till 2037 as we see here for this whole reality, higher reality, the, um, uh, the seven sisters are representing moving from one element to the other, from Taurus to Gemini. So anyway, uh, why do I come to this at the first place? Well, it is Sedna who just crossed this line too, from Taurus into Gemini. And Sedna, as I said, is 11,400 years it takes for a full round. This is the most um, timeless messenger in a way. And I wrote down a few keywords here for this uh, planet. It is, let me see where I have it, 24, yes. So it is really nature's voice in a way. It's, it's, a, it's a record keeper, Sedna. It has been named after the Inuit goddess of the, of the deep sea, who is the mother, the, the goddess of all the fish and the sea creatures and the, and the mermaids and the, all the secrets and wonders of the deep sea. And um, many people, many scientists even say we know less about the deep sea than we know about outer space. So there's enormous mysteries uh, Setna is able to bring to light and that's exactly that Gemini phase which now starts for the next 41 years hmm? in 2076 Setna will have its closest approach to earth and then again it goes out on a, on a new um, 11,400 year orbit so we have just caught it um, found it was discovered in 2004 just as you see 70 years plus before it's um, finally having its closest approach to earth and to the sun so it is in that phase of relief relieving itself of, 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 of if it's information it has collected through the last 10,000 plus years so it is really a record keeper and voice of nature bringing in the observations experiences out in the alien worlds of the of the of, of deep space of interstellar frequencies it's a sacred world it, it has really a link to that I mean, it, 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 it really, I mean, 10,000 plus years, this is really beyond our understanding of what, what time is. It is way too big for us to grasp. It is that eternal element which comes in too through Sedna. So let's look at Sedna's chart and then at the, um, at the, Gemini ingress. Well, first I wanted to say, let's see, I think I have, it. Uh, it's no more available. Anyway, we, this is a very special week to start with. It started with, well, I wanted to show you this quickly. 
with the galactic center at the ascendant that was the full moon chart of the 23rd hmm? so whenever the galactic center is at one of the main axes you can think this you can expect this will be a very special week a very special two weeks actually into a new moon um, uh, early may yes uh, this is a culmination we are in right now on many levels in my last video I shortly mentioned that um, Venus enters Taurus tomorrow Mars enters Aries on the last day of April the 30th so boom boom Venus into her own sign Mars into her own sign these are the two creative basic primal forces here in the physical biological plane we are experiencing here on planet Earth so express uh, expect a new creation cycle to roll in I think that is the most basic way one could say it something is starting to grip nature is getting its voice back it has slowly building up its capacities got everything every one every little particle every being into the right position right place and then it will definitely start to deliver starting May the 1st you can expect things to be pretty wild so be prepared it's definitely worth to be able to just sit back and watch and do whatever needs to be done to have what you need and this naturally includes all your loved ones and family and bond of affection connected beings animals you care for whatnot you know what i'm talking about so be prepared in other words we are getting into quite extreme territory as was expected after that solar eclipse on the 8th and then the mercury retrograde still lingering on into the 25th so it was pretty clear i guess many of us astrologers said that don't expect something immediate to really happen there is an underground motion of getting ready and with setna crossing into gemini this has just gone really into that territory naturally setna is a bit ahead of the game again and which is nice all those um other energies are in their final phase mars in 29th degree of pisces and um venus also um just to mention these two but let's now look at the um birth chart first of setna hmm? birth chart meaning the, the meaning the discovery chart november 14 2003 scorpio sun Cancer moon, beautiful trine in water with Mars here, not exactly in the trine position in the 120 degree, but still resonating within this grand water trine. Sun at the south node, yes, this definitely uh, is a very, very rich treasure trove of past of what was of the mystery of the deep cosmos scorpio also the fourth house cusp here in scorpio which actually is where earth is right now if we go quickly jump around here a little bit actually i should show you quickly first this chart with the overlay that makes most sense to start with so inside again you have setna's discovery chart outside you have the transits of setna's gemini ingress number two as i say it had a few short weeks between june 15 and november the 25th it was i guess or the 22nd somewhere in that range when it was in gemini already last year so anyway sun moon trine 
and here you see the present Earth is here and the present Moon is here with Pluto hmm? quite something hmm? that on the Gemini ingress of this planet which is definitely a super important moment it's, it's begins a 41 year period so Moon on Pluto okay um, this says this energy is just starting to wake up and expose and 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 multiply itself in a way that's what the moon definitely helps to bring that energy out into the open to be felt to be experienced and uh, Pluto in Sagittarius this is um A deep thir thirst, uh, thirst for, for, for spiritual evolution. Uh, Pluto understands there's dimensions upon dimensions. It's it's definitely so. Then naturally the moon here, mm -hmm. in Cancer, in its own sign again, Cancer does the sign of record-keeping as such of history of our ancestors of our home of what we root in root and earth the ground this is the trunk of the tree and Sedna itself at 1758 here in Taurus when it was discovered definitely in resonance with Sun uh, with moon and sun both also with Pluto actually there's a beautiful yacht here Pluto is at the helm and there's a sexta between Sedna the north node and the moon and Hygeia and the others too but these mainly so first of all the north node together with sedna means yes this is bringing in this energy this is what is needed for this time for this age to open all the vaults of information and bring out all the riches of the past that's what sedna stands for um, and it came to me, I mean, Setna is often experienced as a more difficult planet in a personal chart. Now, that is true. Um, there is quite a dark uh, myth which goes with Setna as having been a, a girl who kind of refused, at least that's one of the versions, there are several versions, she refused all the men who came uh, to wanting to marry her and her father got so annoyed by that and then um, said well if you um, cannot make your mind I go and uh, marry you to the raven and he um, brings literally his daughter onto the boat and paddles her through through the ocean to the island where the uh, just to, to 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 no more having to feed her I guess and then, anyway it's a dark story eventually um uh, the, the st storm arises and then um, uh, the father gets so afraid he throws his daughter over the bo uh, the edge of the of the ship uh, to calm the sea down which it does but he sacrifices his daughter setna and uh, to make her let go of the edge of the canoe and um, he he hits her fingers with the paddle and and then um, the fingers the limbs break off and they become sea creatures and fish that is kind of the very very dark story on many ways so there's an initiation right you could say which every planet has in a way this came to me just um, a couple hours ago so every planet once you work through the difficult initiation of its energy you will be able to harness all its riches this is true definitely for Jupiter <laughs> Saturn Uranus Neptune Pluto all of them all uh, each has its own challenges and once we are able to 
master those challenges and not be um, personally harmed by them, which means really in the end that you are okay with any and every emotion because you're able to handle it. You have experienced it before. It's nothing new. You know what's to be expected in a in rough form, definitely not to the detail, but you are ready to plunge into the ocean. You are ready to jump from the from the cliff into the uh, this, the lake or the sea or the river and you're ready to get into the canoe and and uh, go down that um in in your in your little whatever um what you call the kayak uh, down the waterfall even uh, it's it's all a matter of initiations of allowing to grow and and mature and become smarter and wiser and more in contact with your intuition most of all mm. just trust nature know that you are part of nature and that nature will take care of you if you are using your own intelligence your own god-given talents and powers and are devoted to improve them step by step all of that included but setna definitely has lots and lots to give once we understand its its inside its its depth its its richness and that all comes through now yes i wanted to show you a few more of the really amazing um, coincidences here we had yesterday on that uh, 27th of april when this energy was fully installed so the sun here right at the zenith of this discovery chart uh, in a way says it all setna is coming to really become the president you could almost say in the sun in the 10th house this is uh, the, the the house of the king the ruler and then um, with jupiter and uranus up here in its by transit in its 10th house and an interesting little detail you see the the black moon in Setna's discovery chart is in the first degree of Gemini and did not Setna just enter Gemini so it now activates its own shadow mm -hmm. interesting the same actually is the case with Pluto Pluto in its discovery chart of um, February 18 1930 there definitely will come the time when we look at that chart too has the black moon in the first degree of Aquarius where it is presently in yes it's already in the second or third now but it will go back to that it rotates around it still means okay first we have to learn to handle the dark side of that planet with Pluto in Aquarius naturally it is all about AI and um wanting to harness that power and turn us all into robots literally which they have um definitely uh, caught us on on the wrong foot and uh, a kind of unaware humanity at large and they already have definitely um done more damage than um than would be uh kind of yeah it's it's been a, a rough ride for many people and the great and uh, really a dark awakening on many levels as we all know but this is kind of pluto's shadow we have that same thing now with setna here on its own dark moon so there might be some first difficult experiences linked to this nature getting its voice back and um actually with um together with Ceres and Uranus um this is quite interesting um why do I mention Ceres and Uranus well let me show you C 
so okay let me sh let me go step by step here that I don't lose my um, my thread okay so one say one um, uh, thing I discovered um, actually quite uh, by intuition again which often happens I wanted to look at the Uranus Neptune conjunction in 1993 which started a whole new cycle in Capricorn I just felt like doing that and that's the chart I found no it's this one yes okay I did like that what I uh, stumbled upon you see the similarity of those two charts the one I just show you said now now expressing itself through the Gemini energy and this is the Uranus Neptune conjunction which sets the stage for a roughly I guess 170 year phase or so <clears throat> and this was a very special that Uranus Neptune in in um, Capricorn really making these planets become visible real tangible and that is what Capricorn is all about to crystallize these energies to give them form and shape and expression and so we can start working with them modeling them and also understanding them in a more practical and um, and um, down-to-earth way because hmm? literally before um, and to to a big part still those two are still um, kind of hard to grasp in their potentialities both Neptune and Uranus anyway we are in on that journey and Setna is helping big time to make this more real interesting in this chart here you also have Mercury here at zero degree Aquarius so it's all linked together Saturn by the way who is the dispositor of uh, all planets in Capricorn is in um, Aquarius in Uranus sign so actually there's what's called a mutual reception between Uranus and Saturn which is one of the nicest way two planets can work together as they are in each other's shoes in a way they understand each other on a much more profound level and are able to work together and naturally Uranus in the short form is the new Saturn is the old so they are literally shaking hands making things happen in a very beautiful way there's many many beautiful things in this chart it would uh, uh, definitely deserve a whole reading in itself but what I wanted to say is this was when the seed was planted for this integration of the spiritual principles into the into real life into into our day-to-day -day reality and this is well underway and now with Setna entering um, Gemini for good this is definitely um, reinforcing that original intention hmm, I would say now I, wo I won't bore you too much more with this chart but there's definitely a few things I want to point out uh, Mars Neptune conjunction here which as I say is pretty much exact as we speak as I speak <laughs> which is um, extremely rich and it gives Neptune life and Neptune is in a, a, a super interesting position as it's still in the sign Pisces but uh, now in that new hexagram which bridges over into early Aries which is 25 innocence I keep saying that it's the really the sign of new beginnings of rebirth the two days prior to um, spring equinox when 
invisibly everything is already attuned to the new frequency yes it's still kind of undercover that's kind of how this feels but mars is entering aries as i say just two days from now and this will really be the kickoff when the match is lit in a way whatever that means in whatever context and there's many many different individual ways this will express naturally in each person's life in their own way but definitely also the mercury just having come out of its retrogression just starting to gain momentum still being stationary means almost not moving very very slow and that is kind of one of the ways astrologers see the power of a planet the slower it moves usually the more impact it has naturally with the north node together it's all about pushing as how as strongly as possible towards evolving our perception evolving our ability to dream new realities into creation and it is really as simple as that that's once the idea is born once the vision is there once we have that inner flame lit up then everything is falling in place it's it is literally the magnetic energy which comes from that, that intention power of that intention which pulls everything towards its completion brings in the right ingredients at the right moment it's like the right thought popping into your mind at the right time meeting the right person I mean there's so many many miracles even in 24 hours if we pay close attention that is what's happening in increased ways and then naturally um, if we look at the ninth house cusp here of this um, ingress chart Setna into Gemini there's Uranus and Jupiter yes now separating so really releasing that uh, that power still both in hexagram 23 which i found super super interesting 23 is as you know i speak often of that hexagram um falling apart splitting apart collapse and in a way this is a very liberating um, event because once things really start falling apart then we have the permission to start from scratch again to redo to rethink to look again to rearrange everything and put it in a new order that's kind of the idea here then <laughs> the black moon here at the equatorial point yes um, it's all about coming to terms with the shadow simple as that on all levels over and again and when we look at the heliocentric chart now of this moment now it gets interesting now watch this point here the east uh, equatorial ascendant which is the ascendant on the naturally on on the equator of earth on that particular um meridian which is the zero meridian hmm. so this is pretty much the zero zero point if you want zero degree north south latitude zero degree east west longitude hmm. so this is a super powerful point with the black moon here in the Greenwich chart so anyway hmm. Juno <laughs> I have been talking a, a lot about Juno lately uh, those of you who are following me regularly there were these solar flares which were all empowering Juno in various ways either the flare went off right in that direction the x-ray pulse 
or the moon was exactly in that degree or the sun was exactly in that degree it was in multiple locations uh, uh, connecting with Juno's discovery chart it's quite unbelievable definitely way way beyond any odds for such to happen so Juno again Juno again here in the in a pole position naturally here the heliocentric which is the base energy which which we are feeding on now Juno in short is uh, for those of you who are new I always try to kind of um, explain everything uh, also for yeah that's why so you can show you also my videos are all long <laughs> but uh, Juno is teamwork partnership working together it is the idea of being with a partner and being so bonded and deeply supporting each other it is um through thick and thin as it says juno naturally is also um hera in greek mythology who was zeus wife who was very um committed and faithful and yes also very um uh, at times uh, very um, jealous uh, of, of his escapades and and angry all of the above so it is the whole palette of emotions comes with it but it is that deep um, bond of of affection which is represented by Juno super important in our present times to support one another to work together to understand that as a group we truly gain the power to go where we need to go where evolution wants to take us so we have to trust also our um, emotions in that sense our connections and 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 support so Juno is super important here in this chart too. So Juno is bringing together, it's bringing together literally also the uh, all that mysterious information into what already is here and trying to find ways to be understood and accepted and that all of what is there in Setna's deep pocket of wisdom and and whatnot that we have to find ways to not waste that uh, potential and to make sure these seeds really um, uh, fall on fertile soil and are embraced and ingested and 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 deeply looked into not i wouldn't say believed or or whatever i never would use that word in that context uh, because it's really there's nothing really to believe um, it is all about having the eyes to see and once we know how to look and that's maybe the whole thing um, we have to learn the techniques and and then learn to use tools and and open our senses to evolution in a new direction all of that which will eventually allow us to also have the same insights direct insight uh, like um, what Setna is bringing back I mean again it's a quantum entanglement too so it's so many things at once so let's now go a little further um, we looked at this chart the overlay now we have looked at this chart this chart is insofar interesting as um, in the heliocentric geometry here for Setna's discovery Neptune is right at the seventh house cusp So Neptune is um, particularly here in Aquarius. This is 
the multiple bands of frequencies and they're all there simultaneously it's like simultaneous there's all the different dimensions and they're all in the same space i mean it could be where you're sitting there on your sofa wherever you are it could be a beach in another dimension or maybe this could be a mountain top of a mountain uh, just imagine it's all just different frequencies on a radio dial all the stations are right here and it's just a matter of, of tuning into a certain frequency band and everything shifts into a different mode you hear other voices you hear different sounds see new things arise phasing in and out of dimensions so setna is really a treasure trove there's no question beyond our imagination beautiful also that um saturn hygeia and ceres conjunction here in cancer actually when we go back to the geocentric chart you see this arrangement is slightly different Hygieus here about eight degrees ahead of Saturn but what comes in between is the moon so it is um it is definitely a trademark of Sedna that whole configuration here in the 11th house by the way hmm? the 11th house again which resonates with the seventh house cusp here of and I should in that context uh, let's start with the ascendant the Leo ascendant very determined very um, intent of sharing and of showing up of speaking out of being heard and seen that Leo rising very very beautiful taking the rain into its own hand if necessary and having a loud voice actually um, I looked it up Setna has its uh, heliocentric north node means where it's diving out of the ecliptic above uh, to the northern latitudes uh, which is really the moment the planet uh, kind of comes out of the ocean its north node its rising node is at 14 degrees leo so this is very very powerful um uh, this um chart also with aw197 here which is the art of turning energies around in your favor even if you get uh, something which is coming starting out on a wrong foot with a bad intention can be turned around into its best outcome that's kind of um the, the work uh, that the energy of the aw197 also art of war or um what's the other word um strategy mm -hmm. so anyway first of all yes it uh, setna has this personality of being a respected and and remarkable character in this cosmic soap opera I often like to call astrology it's really nothing much different you just have 40 characters yes there's quite a few here and um, you might get a bit intimidated in the beginning because there's all of these characters and I'm rarely speaking about them don't worry I'm always focusing on the ones which are important which is in any uh, good soap opera you have all these many characters there's also always a few who are in the lead role who play a really uh, a vital 
role in the present unfolding of the story and the others are just more statists and um, uh, there to to make uh, things look nice. <laughs> That's similar in astrology. So we have to focus on what really stands out. So uh, what I wanted to say is yes that Neptune in the sixth house actually still which is nice as it's way more practical and down to earth actually bringing something to completion in this final degree of the sixth house similar to 29 degrees or 30 degrees um, Virgo that is that position very very rich in in that ability to put something into a perfect form and categorize it and label it even it's that Virgo energy which comes through and this then shows further in that deep love for history I would call that hmm? the ability to see that everything is born out of the ocean and comes out of the existing what ever has been encoded very very beautiful also with the moon in here naturally very nurturing energy very feminine no question Setna is a feminine energy mm, very obvious mm. so now um, <laughs> I will show you some little extras here so you see we had the two flares which I pointed out before the, these two flares the M2.1 and the M3.0 and it was around this time about f f three o'clock in the afternoon when Setna entered Gemini so again the two markers in time and now take be aware something is happening coming soon and th that was it have you seen it hmm? anyway so <laughs> that was the first flare now i um, want to have the discovery chart here on the side so i don't have to jump all the time let's bring it up here um no it's not this one it is this one okay here we go okay here we go okay so when that first flare went off Midheaven over the zero meridian was 1712 Taurus. In its discovery chart, Satan is at 1758 Taurus. Hmm? Nice. Uranus in the discovery chart is at 2854 Aquarius. Hmm. Descendant here. Hmm? Okay, coming in with a bang. Okay, here I am bringing in some new frequencies, something for you to embrace, to to take in something which you didn't really um, know existed even. That's that Uranian flavor, and you see, and it's also there is a actually in the heliocentric, it's pretty exact. There's an opposition between. Uranus and uh, Jupiter and Uranus actually I should quickly show you once more here in the heliocentric here you see it 1 degree 42 5 degrees 25 so again Jupiter Uranus energy is here basically ingrained in the Setna energy part of it so no wonder this is a great time for uh, this um, evolution of Setna now expressing through Gemini in full flavor. Anyway, let's go back here once more and then um, Ceres, right, is the other one I wanted to point out. Ceres in Setna's discovery chart at 25 
here in a quite n tight conjunction here in the geocentric chart with Hijaya mostly. 23, 25, Cancer. Um, okay, we have to go to the second flare now. That's what it is. No, no, I, I, I wait and see. I'm missing something here. Um, but, um, 24, 25. Yes, um, it is... Um, Yeah, just bear with me. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it's vertex point. Vertex is super important too. So vertex is opposing that Ceres and um, Hygeia, which again is um, along the line which I said before. It's the nurturing and the healing aspect which comes in here, focus, in into focus. And then um, let's have a, another look at them. Um, there is Ceres here, right? Okay, yes, Ceres, Ceres, and Capricorn. That's twenty degrees Capricorn, and that is opposing the Moon. Yes, I mean, I mean it's it's on so many levels. And then, um, okay, the second flare. Let's not stay too long here. Keep it short and sweet okay that is this is the next thing i wanted to say so this flare m3 which actually is the number three is quite important in, in setna's um overall numerology i found it's birthday november the 14th 19 uh, 2004 let's just quickly go here um november 14 2004 it's a five a two is a seven and a five is a 12 reduces to a three hmm? so three is the base number you could say of its discovery chart so it's a zero two three zero solar flare and then, um, okay, this solar flare and if we look at the, ge the, the heliocentric chart, so this solar flare was directed here um, something like 18 degrees west from Earth's zero meridian with the sun, which is the sun's center, uh, central um, meridian. So the sunspot which erupted, if you think of the sun here at the center, this is Earth. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the sun. So the sunspot was here and erupted in this direction towards Pallas and Mercury and the Earth uh, most perfectly towards Pallas. Pallas which is about recognition of patterns and Pallas in the geocentric moment of the chart was conjunct the Ascendant. So anyway this shows that the ability to perceive has just been heightened overall and actually that mm, flare we just had a few hours ago as i speak was mercury directed which um okay too many charts open <laughs> sorry about that so yes it was going pretty much in this direction dead on facing Mercury getting the strongest blast so um, well I guess I showed you the big part of what I had wanted to say 
Oh, uh, still even a few more things here nice to be mentioned. Okay, are you still having the energy to go a little further? Because I have more here for you, I see. So that was in November last year when heliocentric Setna entered Gemini, which, as I say, was the underlying energy which changed. However, just they had just crossed their paths, the heliocentric, the geocentric position. Which means three days prior, Setna had in geocentric geometry moved back into Taurus and then kind of undercover comes in three days later said no now um, having grabbed onto the Gemini energy but yes undercover it has been undercover since then however this in itself is an, another really powerful energy uh, build up it was laying the foundations and you can immediately see why Mars Ceres conjunction in a really perfectly opposing here said now again a 29th degree position very similar to what we have in this present geocentric activation where Mars is in the 29th degree of Pisces hmm? very similar so it is indicating that this will really be a, a time of enormous richness in completing a task bring it full circle it is that final stage of perfection of putting every piece in its right place also Pluto here 29 30th degree then okay now when we do the overlay with the base chart the discovery chart it has look at Mercury hmm? on November 25 last year opening this 40 plus year period of perfectly on Neptune too. Yep, Setna is um, a, a way shower, really opening our eyes to a whole new way of communicating with nature. And it's a two-way street. Yes, nature speaks to us, but we learn to communicate too. It was actually really nice. Um, Jacqueline Hobbs, Oracle Girls' uh, latest reboot was all about that communication with nature on a whole new level of us recognizing its beauty its grace but also giving thanks and 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 responding replying understanding that it's a give and take very Gemini to very much in the way of partnership Juno of give and take being here for one another there's this beautiful beautiful story which I, I, I came to mind a few days ago in context of, of that um, Juno energy of, of helping and being for uh, here for each other. It's actually a, a rabbi who first did um, tell this to his um, students. He went, I mean, it's an allegorical story, but it's a beautiful one. So he went first visited hell, and what he saw there was. Um, Everybody was sitting around these tables full of the most delicious foods. The only problem was they all have stiff elbows. So they couldn't really get the food to their mouths. So they, they, were, they were starving and miserable the, because naturally, what can you do? Anyway, so he went then to heaven. And interestingly enough, he saw exactly the same scene. There were tables full of 
most wonderful foods and the people were actually not in bad mood at all they were very very happy as one should be in heaven but they also had stiff elbows the only difference was they were feeding each other hmm. how beautiful story that is uh, it really makes all the um really bends it, binds it all together brings it to one single point which is that quantum entanglement that uh, you are another me i am another you that we are really here for each other to support to help to be the yin yang which revolves around each other i mean without the mirror we would be lost we would be how sad reality would be if we were lost as an empty dot in space with nothingness around us that is the opposite of having company life is all about relationship i keep saying it juno is somewhat one of the most important characters in our soap opera <laughs> yes okay this is the same chart which I showed you before of November 25. And he, when Setna entered Gemini in heliocentric geometry, now this is but the geocentric, how this moment showed up in the geocentric perspective. So you remember, and let me just jump back here quickly because it's really, again, extremely important, these little details, what difference this makes, these two charts. So this is the energetic base, which is all about that last degree of, of signs, of, of Mars and Ceres in particular. And now, as seen from Earth's perspective, they already are in the new sign. Mm, how about that? So it is really bridging the gap. We are able to bring it down to earth and make it, turn it into something new. That is the simple um, answer to this question. And then you have moon conjunct Jupiter. I mean, it couldn't be more beautiful in Taurus. So uh, the moon and Jupiter are really picking up uh, Setna from where it's coming from, from Taurus having spent there uh, the last whatever 50 years since 1965 actually it's interesting that 1965 to 2024 were the years in Taurus and now from 24 to 65 again 2065 this time it will be in Taurus one of the shortest days in any signs because as I say um, um Setna will have its closest approach to the sun here around the 8th, 9th degree of Cancer in 2076. So naturally as it's approaching the sun, it moves ever faster, it comes ever closer. So through each sign it's a little, little less. So anyway, in Gemini 41 years till 2065. And that is the moment this energy got activated hmm. again i could say so many more things about this chart but i have to let it go i don't want to be here for two more hours <laughs> okay we're getting close to the end this is the midpoint chart between the discovery of setna and it, the moment it entered, the one and only time it entered Gemini seen from the sun's perspective. In the sun's perspective, naturally all the plants move constantly in one direction. It is always, it is only, I should want to say, because here on earth we kind of go from one side to the other side of the sun, uh, traveling on spaceship earth. Therefore, whatever moves slow seems to move with it um, uh, like a bit in and out of shape. You could say that's the, that's the retro and forward motions of the slow planets. 
So anyway, in that perspective, when everything always moves in one direction, Setna's ingress into Gemini and its discovery, the midpoint where these two energies meet, again, you have a node Mercury conjunction, hmm? doubling down on that conjunction we already have here in the geocentric um, here it is hmm, my first chart hmm. that's what happened yesterday and this is what is in the in the resonance of that whole event hmm, you could say And then <laughs> I found this also super interesting, um, linking into the latest solar flare, which, I mean, which probably was the one flare which energized me to really get going here with my podcast here, which watched out for that. Here the midpoint is 27.12 in Scorpio and here we have 27.30 in Scorpio. That was that latest player at 1.11, by the way. <laughs> On a 29th, which is also 11. Lots of 11s here. And as you see, just Mars and Neptune here short before meeting. It's this beautiful grand trine between this ascendant Jupiter here together with Setna at the root of the chart and the black moon. Yeah, there's so many so many resonances here. This is where Ceres is and actually that was the one I was thinking about in its discovery chart. You remember Ceres is here at 25 degrees. Uh, I have it here still. Hmm. Actually, it is here on the seventh house cusp, even more so. Anyway, so last but not least, let's see where we're going. That is Mars entering Aries. More of that in my next video, where I will show you the, the real wonders which are to come. It's getting better and better. Yes, there is difficult things to go through first this is very clear has been from the very beginning everybody who is uh, seeing through the maze knows that it, there's no it's life is not a straight line it's meandering and it has its ups and downs and we have to embrace both open-heartedly understand that one is not possible without the other it is that perfect balance the moon just barely in Aquarius when Mars enters Aries but in the new sign conjunct Pluto yes keep your fingers crossed shifts and changes will come really fast now really fast we have the cardinal cross and yes, I mean, so much more. I will uh, give you um, information on these charts. There's so much happening. It's just getting started. It's the fifth month in an eight year. Five plus eight is 13. They're all Fibonacci numbers, which are in the sequence of the golden means of nature's principles nature's rules and regulations nature's laws are expressed through that sequence a lot so the number 13 is also the number of change that is what may will be wishing you all the best stay in good spirits and take the time every day for 20 minutes to really tune into reality into your body into the frequency bands all the invisible energies which are going on and emit 
ground the energy and emit be the transmitting station for the good frequencies we will change this world into a better place love you all talk to you soon bye bye and thank you for your support for your comments and please look at the description under the video there's always information in there which i haven't been sharing and many many good links and as i say also you find my contacts and if you would like your support is very appreciated thank you bye bye